Hello and welcome. My name is Eric. I'm one of the co-founders of CurePod, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to CurePod. Um, I'm here in my hotel room in San Benito, Texas, where I've just been doing a workshop with a lot of teachers. We got to talking and we figured a lot of what we did here would really benefit everyone using CurePod. So I'm making this really short entry video just to get you started with CurePod. The first thing I press is create lesson. This takes you into the lesson designer. You might get an onboarding experience that allows you to test out the AI first, but at some point you will get in here. This is where you create your lesson. And we usually say CurePod is an interactive presentation tool. With presentation tool, I mean that you, the uh, material you create in CurePod, you are presenting to your class, like you would in PowerPoint, Google Slides, or Canva. Uh, with interactive, I mean that some of the activities you make in CurePod are interactive, so the student can interact with them as you present them. So I'm going to, to give you the quick tour. And the most important button here is add new. And we have generate with AI and create your own. I'm going to go into generate with AI really soon. I'm just going to go to create your own to show you a little bit about what we are working with in CurePod. So in CurePod, we have some different types of slides. It could either be a content slide. See, this is named slide down here. This is filled with content. You can edit them as you can any other tool. Um, I'm not going to go into uh, that's about how you edit them with text, media, elements, background there. You can test it out. But I'm going to show you a few of the other ones. So we have some activities. And these are the activities the students interact with. We have open question, drawing, poll, word cloud, and AI feedback. So I press open question, and I'll say, explain Newton's first law. Well, when I'm ready to use this activity, I can go present. I'll show that again. This present button is what we always press when we want to start the lesson. So I'm in front of my students now in the classroom. I'll go present. I'll go here to click to let your students join. I'll mute it for you now. And uh, now the students can either scan this QR code or go to QR.live and enter this pin to join into QRbot. Now we're ready to get started. So if I now press play and I had any students join in, they could all write in their explanation of Newton's first law. We have different types of activities. We have drawing activities. We could also give the same talk here, explain Newton's first law. The difference is that when you're presenting and starting this activity, instead of writing, your students will be drawing. We have poll. In a poll, you create some poll options and they're choosing. We have a word cloud. Uh, what do you think of when you hear Newton's first law? And then they write in words that will add up to a word cloud. And we have this last one, AI feedback. I will get back to this at the end, and it's the most powerful tool in CurePod. In this tool, if I'll write explain Newton's first law, the students first write, then they will get AI feedback on their answer based on your rubric. So we help you give feedback on open-ended questions to students. But now I've showed you the different activity types you have in CurePod. And down here, you can see what type of activities each slide are. If I now instead go to add new, and instead of create my own, I go to generate with AI. In Generate with AI, we help you fill all of these different activities in CurePod with content. So I'll show you an easy one. I'll go here and I'll go Brain Break. And I'll set it to fifth grade and do magic. Well, now CurePod makes a Brain Break activity for you. I like this one. So I press it to put it into my slide deck. Draw a talking banana wearing a superhero cape and saving a bunch of scared grapes. So what happened here? Well, we can see down here that this is a drawing activity. So it's the same type of drawing activity I made myself here, explain Newton's first law. But what's happening here is the brain break AI generator knew that a brain break in CurePod is a funny drawing activity for the students. So it made a drawing activity where it's already filled this out for you. We can take a look at another one. We can do a would you rather activity. A would you rather activity is uh, an activity where uh, the students choose between two options. We can do a would you rather activity about math. This is a really open prompt. Would you rather be able to solve any math problem instantly or have the ability to create your own mathematical formulas? This is just a would you rather activity, but Gerbil has placed it inside a poll for you. So now you're maybe starting to get the idea of how this works. I'm going to show you, I'm going to start creating a new lesson to give you an example. So if I, for instance, I'm an ELA teacher, I want to create my lesson about Romeo and Juliet. I can look at our generators here and I can say, okay, I want to use a full lesson generator. So this doesn't just create one activity, it creates several. 
I can write Romeo and Juliet. I can go ninth grade, do magic. Now Curable starts to create that lesson. And here it has created my lesson. I can set some different themes. I can add slides I like. And here we have the beginning of a lesson about Romeo and Juliet. Down here, you can see the three first are just content slides, their name slide. Then we have an open question, where together in peers, what's the biggest lesson that Romeo and Juliet teach us about love? First, my feedback, open question. This is good. I might want to add some more. So I'll go back here and I'll say, first of all, my student needs um, a hook or something fun to start with. So I'll go, would you rather activity? And I'll go Romeo and Juliet in text. I like this one, so I'm adding it. Would you rather see Roman Juliet perform at the Wild West shootout in Texas or in a saloon or at a line dancing competition at Texas Rodeo? Okay, that's going to be my would you rather activity. And then what I also know is I've had my students read Romeo and Juliet, so I want to do some compare and contrast. So I go into add new, generate with AI, then I'll go to our ELA section and I'll choose compare and contrast. And now what I'm doing off screen is I'm copying out the text of Romeo and Juliet as the part of Romeo and Juliet I've had my students read, and I'm pasting this in here. <laughs> so now, the Curable AI reads through this text and makes compare and contrast activities based on the content of this text. It works with any text. And this is how our AI templates work. You see this one created, it's read the text, and it created open questions. Uh, so how does Samson and Gregory's attitudes towards Montague differ in this scene? If you wanted to use this activity with your students, you could go present. Then I'm going to pick up my phone here, be a student. I'll drop down this. I will scan the QR code as a student. And now you see I'm in. So I've logged in from my own phone here. And when all my students are in, I'll press start. And now they all get the text field on their participant device to write. If I've done a drawing activity, they would draw. They all write in. And when they're finished, I'm not writing anything now. You would get results up here. So again, this is an in introduction to CureBot. What I do recommend to start playing around with Curable is to first of all, understand the different activities. It's, they are great for classroom participation. All our activities are made to be used synchronously. So there is not something you hand out to your students to be used asynchronously. The reason for that you will see when you test it in the classroom. All our activities are made so the students are interacting with each other's answers. This is done to give them a lot of agency and reach the end goal. And the end goal is always discussions inside the classroom, not everything happening in Curable. So I really recommend playing around with activities, presenting it, joining from your own phone to be a student. And then I recommend playing around with all of these different AI templates. If you're a math teacher, maybe find our poll question generator and do um, addition with star course example for second grade, do magic. There's your addition question. Um, you can also go down here and you can play around with all of it. But I mentioned the last activity I wanted to show you all. This is the AI feedback. This is super powerful. If you now write, explain Newton's first law, and you set the answer expectation to use real world example, and you now present this. Again, I can be a student. I can join in. And I'm again a teacher here on my screen, so I'm starting the activity. This student now has uh, one minute to explain Newton's first law using real world examples. So I'm writing, object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by another force. That's going to be my answer. I've submitted it, I've written it here on my phone. And now what we can do is we can press give feedback. AI now gives every student feedback 
on their devices based on the answer expectation. So to me, it said, great job explaining Newton's first law to make your answer even better. You could also give a real world example to help understand it better. For example, you could say, imagine you're sliding a toy car on a smooth surface, and then it continues with the example. If you want to just see the feedback before sending it out to students, which I highly recommend, you can go down here to setting and open the moderation tool first. We're making a lot of other videos that explains all of this, but the AI feedback is a fantastic way of giving students feedback on their writing, on their short answers. You can use it for writing for exams. Um, there is no limit to what types of activities you can build with it. So again, to summarize here, about interactive presentation tool, we have five different activity types, open question, drawing, poll, word cloud, and AI feedback. And if you're in the generate with AI tab, you can use AI to fill out these activities and contents for you. So best of luck with Curipod. We have a help chat. You can reach out for anything you want to know. And on our website, you can also find an AI certificate course, which takes you a lot deeper into Curipod. Thank you so much for trying it and have a great day. Bye.